we on live. <laughs> yeah, you can see that, but I can't. But it sounds like we're going live. So welcome, everybody, to another episode of Coffee Chat. Uh, I'm Reed Cohen. I'm subbing in for uh, for Sarah Murdoch, as you you may be aware that we're giving her a little break, letting her have some time off this week. And uh, since I'm organizing the tour for Southern India this fall with Imprint Tours, um, I'm going to play host this morning. Uh, our guest, excuse me, our guest is Nina Sefusati. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. She can correct me. Good evening, Nina. Good evening. That was perfect. Thank you. Oh, well very announced. good. Um, she's coming to us from southern France, from Avignon, where she lives. Uh, and uh, we're having her on today because she has had that experience of the, uh, the backwaters of Kerala. So um, in a moment, we're going to launch off talking about that. Just some housekeeping before then. Um, <clears throat> the rest of the week, we've got a virtual tour of Mama Balipuram uh, with, um, with Mr. Lalu that some of you might have met this morning. He's going to give us a virtual tour um, that will be um, at eight o'clock tomorrow evening, Seattle time. You can adjust for wherever you are. And then on Friday, I'll be doing a short PowerPoint presentation um, of the <clears throat> of the actual tour that we have planned. That will be 10 a.m. Seattle time on Friday. Um, OK, um, to get us started here. Um, well, actually, first of all, Nina, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, how you've gotten involved in travel, and how you ended up in Kerala when you visited there. Yep, so well, I was born in Denmark, in Copenhagen, maybe you can hear that, my accent, um, and uh, studied at the University of Copenhagen, studied languages and literature, and was set out to be a high school teacher, but, you know, things don't always go as you plan them to do. <laughs> and um, I met um, a Frenchman whom I married, and uh, he's the reason why I'm now here in Avignon, and I've been for the last 27 years, and started working in tourism when I came here to Avignon in, in Provence, uh, first as a local guide, and then tour guiding. And tour guiding also brought me to Scandinavia, so back to my roots. Um, but Apart from that, apart from my work in tourism, is I enjoy traveling. As many of tour guides, when we don't work, we travel, right? Um, so we travel for work and we travel for pleasure. And I went to Kerala uh, in India just for pleasure. It was in uh, it was uh, four or five years ago, and I actually traveled with a friend. That was quite interesting because I had uh, the only country I had visited in in Asia was Thailand. And Thailand and India, you cannot compare, right? No. But I love Thailand. Well, not a problem. And then I had a friend who talked about India, India, India. She couldn't stop talking about India. She had been there many times. And I, so I said, so I kind of said, you want to go? Should we do, should we do it? And um, so she said, so you haven't been to India before. Maybe we'll start with Kerala. I was going. So why? I want to do the Taj Mahal. I want to do all that. She said, no, let's start nice and easy. <laughs> Going, like kind of, and, and she was so right because Kerala uh, just, well, you fall in love with it. Right? In, the, in the India's own tourism boards, you know, publicity, they talk about God, God's own country, my little paradise on earth, as I'm saying. Has been elected as one of the uh, places to go and see. But Kerala um, was, uh, for, for many people, when you say India, uh, or the uh, reaction I got when I said I'm going to go to India, just two women traveling, people said, Ooh, that's dangerous, isn't it? And I go, uh, What are you talking about? <laughs> I know what they were talking about. You know, people have these images of poverty and uh, insecurity and, and, Yes, it's it's there, but maybe not as much in Kerala as in other parts of, of India. Right? And it's so, so, so beautiful. So you, I still have the images in my mind. I, I actually just found, um, you know, things I had bought in, in Kerala that I still have, you know, <laughs> tickets from entrances to this and that. And um, sadly, I've lost, I've lost many of my photos, but you know, what happens? 
but so Kerala uh, and I really really want to go back uh, that's for sure and do more in India also but but Kerala is just one of those places you you can easily go back to several times I think I, I'd not really thought about that, but but yeah, Kerala makes for a, a, a really, in, in terms of culture shock and adjustment, I think that does make a lot of sense for, for that to be a first stop in India, because India is, is a challenging place. Um, I, I had to smile when you were describing your friend who was just talking India, India, India. Um, what I have experienced in India and in my many trips there is that that India... For starters, it's almost impossible to describe to people, even with pictures, with video, it doesn't matter. It's You cannot really help people. You really cannot make people understand what the experience of India is like. You you have to go. There's That's, that's the only way to ever understand about India. And then when you get to India, it either overwhelms you completely and, and can be a little bit of a negative experience, or you absolutely love it. And for the people that love, and, and my, my point here is there's no middle ground. There's no, there's nobody that goes to India ever and says, nah, it was okay. You know, I'm, I'm glad I went. No, no. It's it's either, oh my God, I can't wait to go back. It's it's in my it's under my skin, it's in my blood. I I I just can't wait to go back. And they end up like your friend who goes back over and over and over again, or it's a little too much for them. So uh, maybe strategy wise, starting in Kerala is a, is a good way to go. Uh, and I sure don't want to put anybody off from going and trying, right? I mean, it's a, uh, I, I often talk about travel is like the, the story of the princess and the frog, right? Uh, the, it, you, you've got to get out there on the road and you've got to be willing to kiss a few frogs that hop across your path because there's so many princes out there and, and India in particular has a lot of princes, but you have, but there's a risk involved, right? You might, it might be a warty old toad that you kissed. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm going on way too long, but that's because I feel pretty, uh, pretty passionate about about India. I think that's clear this week and uh, previous week. Um, getting back to Kerala and the backwaters. And by the way, that's my backdrop that I've chosen here is one of the classic houseboats. We'll we'll, be, we'll talk about that with Nina in just a minute. I'm just going to read the little introductory blurb from uh, from Lonely Planet about the backwaters. Um, they write. Uh, the undisputed main attraction of a trip to Kerala is traveling through the 900 kilometer network of waterways that fringe the coast and trickle far inland. Long before the advent of roads, these waters were the slippery highways of Kerala, and many villagers today still use paddle power as their main form of transport. Trips to the backwaters traverse palm fringed lakes studded with cantilevered Chinese fishing nets and wind their way along narrow shady canals where choir, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's coconut fiber, copra, which is dried coconut kernels, and cashews are loaded onto boats. Along the way are isolated villages where farming life continues as, as it has for eons. Um, what do you think, Nina? Is that, is that, a, is that a fair thumbnail introduction to-, That's to the pretty good, that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, you, for me, I don't know, you know, maybe not for everybody, but I love boats. I love sea. I love everything that has to do with water. So anywhere I go in the world, if I can get on a boat and I get on the water, I'll do it. <laughs> right. right. And luckily enough, the friend that I traveled with, the same thing. And, uh, but, but the backwaters is something that you see pop up very often when you read about Kerala or, uh, watch any any anything you know talking about Kerala is the backwaters you have to do the backwaters but there are many different ways of doing the backwaters and um, what we actually did was that we we started off in um, or we started off in Kushan we did Munar and then we came down to Alipé and Alipé is is one of the places you can start right you can start in different places but it gives you really those short boat rides or full day boat rides or several day boat rides it, it you can there's so many possibilities and as i said earlier everything is easy in Kerala. it's kind of you you have something in your mind you're going maybe we could do and then yep you have the solution 
it, it, it it's a incredible but anyway so <clears throat> i would say you have all these different ways of doing it but what it does is that it takes you in to these lagoons and, and lakes and, and canals and the, the many rivers, right, in Kerala and so on. And, and you just, you're passing by these people living in their villages, you know, children running, bicycling, waving to you, hi, <laughs> and uh, or the, the people cooking, you know, they're, they're just going on with their life and you're just sailing by very calmly. <laughs> you're not, usually you're not, you know, speeding, on the, on the waterway, on the backwaters, right? That would be, it would be a little, you know, a waste just to speed past. But, and it's really, it, it calms you down. There's something about, generally what I like about river sailing or whatever is that it, it, you're just there sitting and taking it in. Like if you were sitting, I don't know, in a square in Rome and having a espresso and you're just taking in the people and the ambience. Here you're just sailing past and it's, it, it's wonderful and the, the vegetation is incredible you know palm trees and coconut trees and rice paddies and the, the landscape is changing so that is, is really is one of the i would say one of the most incredible experiences i've done um so but the, the like the you want to talk about the maybe the boat you have behind you that house well boat? I, I was going to say what what was your chosen mode of transport then how, how did you choose to experience the backwaters I was on a budget travel, um, <laughs> so we we kind of just went with the flow, and then we figured we found out that those houseboats that you have uh, on your image behind you was an option. Uh, you could be on that for like a day or half a day. You could have lunch on board. You could be there for twenty four hours. You could sleep on board. I'm going, yeah, it's fine, but we wanted to be more. Can I say? with the locals. So we uh, found out that there was um, a public ferry, which is quite a large boat. There was quite a number of people on board, but a local ferry that stops several times. And we thought, perfect, perfect. So we saw people getting on and getting off and it took us actually eight hours, um, slow, <laughs> slow boating there also with the stops, et cetera. And on top of that, they stopped at a given moment in the middle. For those who do, for those of, you know, like us or other people, passengers on board, it was actually this way of, of um, having lunch because they, on board, there was like chips and sodas and, you know, you could buy something to drink and, and maybe little munches, but a lunch. And <laughs> there was just a very simple place, like on the canal right there, you stop, boop, you got off, and then um, you pay for yourself. But, it's not expensive. So we had lunch in the middle of the day, which was a, um, a nice way also getting off the boat and getting on the boat again. But the thing about the public ferry was, first of all, not expensive. <laughs> it was probably, I can't remember the price, but it was probably the less, most, less expensive transportation I've ever done in my life on a boat. And, and see people who work there, who live there, and tourists, obviously, travelers like myself, uh, was a really interesting uh, full day of just, you know, again, taking it in and, and living and, and watching what was, you know, going past us. And that is a ferry that goes back and forth. Uh, we were going Alipi uh, Kolam, and you could go the other way around also, the different possibilities. Obviously, you have people doing both and um, in both ways. And then there was a, the, actually, this was a story was that on the boat there was this um there's a group of people that were a little bit dressed in the same way a little hippie kind of you know with children not with children guitar over the shoulder going hmm it's like a little tribe there they didn't seem to know one another but you know they they look very much alike and they all got off at the same the same place and we found out i i had heard about this but i hadn't figured out that it was on our route that they were all going to the same um woman guru um but also humanitarian called ama the hugging saint i don't know if you've heard about ama 
you know, an incredible woman who, um, who actually lives in that area and thousands and thousands of pilgrims are coming to, to see her. But there was, there was a little odd story in the middle because we didn't see any locals getting off at that stop. It was only the, the ones with the guitars on the back and whatever, you know, so. So there were all kinds of people on that boat, pretty fun. Um, and, um, and, and taking, having a full day like that, where you're just sitting down and maybe walking a little bit back and, back and forth. Um, on the boat was was great. I I will really really recommend it also. Um, th there it does <laughs> seem to be. I mean, there always is a, a camaraderie of the road, right? When you're when you're traveling, especially when you're traveling close to the ground like you did, you know, budget. Well, yeah. um, mm -hmm. You know, you meet other travelers. There's there's always a, an easy connection, and that's how you find out about things that aren't in the Lonely Planet book and 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 whatnot. But th it seems to be even more so, I think, in India there. Um, uh, you know, my f I'm thinking more about my first experiences there, which are almost 30 years ago now. There is a real camaraderie of the road uh, that emerges in India. And it sounds like you had uh, some of that experience on the on the ferry. You know, I, we probably should have started early on with um, some images here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I didn't really prepare myself for being ready to do that. So now I'm going to have to navigate to where I've got the images. So everybody just bear with me here. Uh, la, 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 la. go with okay uh let's see where do we want to start i'm, I'm going to start with uh, i think this is yeah it's inside the ferry is that the ferry yeah so this is this is what uh, nina has been describing i mean i i should have put this up earlier is, is there anything else you would add to uh to, to seeing this image well, looking at, you see more uh, locals than travelers. And I was on a ferry that they were half and half, you know, they were, that was it. But, but you get the idea, right? It, it's, it might not look comfortable, but it actually is. And everybody is just, um, you know, not kind of um, being weird about you being, you know, a traveler, because I guess they're used to that. And there is a little toilet in the back, by the way, you know, a little... WC in the back if you need that. Um, they can see you can actually also go um, on top of the boat because there's a kind of a little deck, uh, that a covered deck. And uh, so if you don't like sitting there and maybe it's getting a little hot or whatever, you can always hop on top of the deck and, and getting really the fresh air. Yeah. But you see, it's fairly, it's fairly simple. Um, I would, I, don't like to use use the word primitive right but it, it's simple it's functional um and and we felt completely safe i mean there was no problem with that they might do a little old the fairies so you go hmm. <laughs> but um but it's it's you know it's just a, a beautiful relaxed way of doing it and i i, I like that way of traveling i mean when we were in, in kerala we went by bus quite a bit also and which was a little, it was not too complicated to figure out. It was just, you have to change here, get there. It's, it's a really good transportation system. And the same thing in the buses, right? We are just here with our, you know, little bags and whatever we have with us. And nobody is kind of, um, can I say, noticing us or it was just part of the crowd. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So you see, it's not, it's not a huge ferry. I can't remember how many passengers in total there was on it, but, you know, it's not huge. It's not like hundreds and hundreds of people coming in and out. Right? That's not the, the way then. Now, uh, you mentioned before we uh, went live, Nina, that you had tuned in and, and listened to uh, Chitan and Lalu and I this morning. And one of the things I brought up was uh, a concern about uh, what I call the hassle factor of India. Um, uh, and, and they they confirm for me what I've been seeing over 30 years in India, that that's something that's getting getting better and better. Uh, it looks to me like uh, it's sort of 
you, you're a little bit of a curiosity, but probably because you're standing up there taking a photograph more than anything. Uh, but, but people pretty much left you alone unless you wanted to engage with them. Is that a fair assessment? Completely, completely. I mean, if, if you look at the lost, I, we actually had a, <laughs> um, an encounter, if you want, in, we arrived in, I can't remember which city it was, um, but we're arriving with the bus. We just got off the bus and you know, two women traveling. We knew where we were going, right? We, we, we knew which hotel we were going to. And um, so we were just kind of figuring out where to go. And then I, we had this gentleman coming up to us and saying, you need a hotel. Yeah, you know, like, hello, do you need a hotel? And as typical Western women, when we travel in places like that, where, you know, particularly women traveling alone, of course, was we were kind of, mm, you know, go, no, no, being being really rude, unpolite to that poor gentleman who then excused himself and said, sorry, sorry, I just want to help you. And we just felt, I mean, we felt the worst tourist in the world. We're the, the bad tourists, you know. Um, so no, I mean it was is always it was always helpful. Um, people would very often come up to you if you look lost. And we also have another situation where it was in a in a tea room, I think somewhere, where we're just sitting and chatting, I'm, and we're talking in, in French, my friend and I. And this gentleman comes up to us and say, "Sorry, sorry, I'm just I'm listening to you, and I can hear you talking French, but can I you know, speak English also?" Yeah, of course. I mean, everybody speaks English. <laughs> That's one of the great advantages of traveling in India is English. You you get by anywhere, right? It's kind of what. They are common part of their common languages also and and he started talking to us and we started saying yeah, kind of, yeah please sit down and it, it showed out that it showed that it was a history professor and we had a I don't know, several hours long talk about india's history and the brits and you know, oh, that not so glorious history so you see what i mean is that you if you are open if you don't look close as we did for instance when this gentleman came up to us and say you need a hotel and we thought that he was you know, trying to get us somewhere we didn't want to go. If you get the right vibes, if you are in the right mood and you get the, you know, you get the right contact, there are so many possibilities in India to, to talk to people and to get more knowledge, to get wiser, to, I mean, the way we traveled was we had the first hotel when we arrived and then we had the last hotel. The other accommodations, it was not hotels, actually, most of homestays with a family. And how we worked it out was we would ask at the homestay, do you have a cousin? Do you know anybody who has, um, you know, I don't know, another homestay in Muna? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, they always know somebody who knows somebody. So we, we actually, through our contacts, through the people we were talking to, figured out we, want, we wanted, we had a plan, right? The, the towns and places we wanted to go to, but we the accommodations they just came as we went on, and and that was it was just a, a great way of doing it because people will will advise you and help you and you know no problem. If you're traveling with children, it's even <laughs> over the top because you know children are kind of a contact means of contact very often, right? But so as I said in the beginning to women traveling alone in India, as people had warned us saying, ah, maybe you should get careful. Not at all. Not once, not once were there anything that was, that felt not right or, you know, so. Well, you've, you've, was... you've touched on a couple of things that, that I think are really important for us to talk about. First of all, the English thing. I mean, of course, India has a national language of Hindi, but the middle class, absolutely the common language is English, right? And it, it's it's a little bit of a learning curve to get used to that heavy accent and and the the things that go with you get that. Into once it. you kind of you get into kinda, it. Yeah, once you you uh, ease into the cadence of the way that they speak, um, it, it's no problem finding somebody to communicate with you uh, anywhere you go. Absolutely anywhere you go. The second thing that you bring up is is something that's kind of a that's been important to me for years and years and years. And that's that Americans are fearful. We, we are a fearful people. And we uh, very often take our fears with us unnecessarily. 
you know, I, I was talking about the hassle factor. I was talking about the intensity of India. The, you know, India is exotic, but it is absolutely safe. I mean, you, you know, you may get tired of people maybe trying to sell you something or, or talk you into coming to their restaurant, but, but there is never a moment that you feel physically threatened. And I, I can't imagine a place more safe for two women to travel, right? I mean, uh, it's it, it, whatever would happen to you, uh, the, the worst that could happen to you, I would ca uh, characterize as, as a hassle but but to be fearful, to be afraid about your safety or anything like that, absolutely. I'm so I was so glad to hear you reporting that because that's my experience all over India and and actually in many many of the places that that our clientele that have come from maybe from a Rick Steves tour, the um, Rick Steves and and Arthur Fromer and a couple of other people have made have sort of demystified Europe in the last forty years and made it feel safe to Americans. But you know, back in the '60s, Europe was an exotic, scary place oh, yeah. to go. Uh, and um, uh, I'd like to be an ambassador for the rest of the world. Uh, and certainly on the on the subject of safety, uh, the places that we go are typically far, far, far more safe <laughs> than America. And I, I always tell people at the beginning of any tour that I do, whether that's Europe or India or Thailand or wherever, you have left the dangerous place behind. You don't need to take your same fears with you. You can go out after dark <laughs> and you can walk down these little dark alleys in Venice. It's safe, you know. So anyway, sorry for uh, getting on my hobby horse there. Um, no, but you, you touched on those things and those are so important to hear, I think, about mm -hmm. a place that is exotic and different for us, but but safe for sure. Let's let's change pictures and I don't know really what's going to come up next. Oh, this is just one of the many versions of a of a houseboat here. A houseboat, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's a the, the simpler version. Like it actually the simplest, I mean the, the where those houseboats came from was originally just very simple models, very much like that, transporting rice or you know other agricultural goods that they then figured out um, you know, kind of transforming into a little more comfortable, maybe uh, houseboats. But that's, you could say, a very simple version of it there. Right? But it's just, look at the colors there. It's just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so um, for the people who might be thinking about uh, coming on tour with us in Southern India, I wanted to include a, a, an overnight houseboat thing. Mm -hmm. I was, I inquired whether it was possible to like start in Aleppo and end up in Cochin or something. But it just it, logistically it just didn't fit so we we won't be actually spending the night on a houseboat which which might have been a little too rough for for some of my clientele anyway um but uh did you did you ever see a uh, somebody paddling around in a corkle like this when you were there yeah, oh, yeah. yeah but that's it you see all kinds of uh, transportation means you know some simpler than others right and uh it's just the thing is that you you figure out how they use just what's around them, right? It could be just the of course the wood for for, for the boat, right? There are wooden planks right? for, for a boat, otherwise you wouldn't really go. Um, but also the fact that they have the, the palm leaves on 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 the roofs of the coverings of the houseboat. Um, the, the, you know, if anything material-wise that is local can be used, and this is it. I mean. We're talking about a region where people were, and to a certain extent still, uh, poor. Although there has been, uh, that is one thing I think fascinating about Kerala is the whole um, political uh, thing that has been going on in Kerala. Um, they have had, uh, I'm going to frighten the Americans, but communists, <laughs> Marxists, <laughs> um, mm -hmm state uh, administration and well, it's a state Kerala is a state in India and their uh, um, administration has been communist left-wing you know it's just a little bit um, changing but that has led to an enormous amount of social reforms helping the poor farmers 
uh, giving Prince I heard that they they had installed um, retirements for poor farmers. I mean, there was nothing that existed like that before. So we talked about a period of time that was 1950s up to the 1970s, and then it changed again. But it just means that Kerala is 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 you would have people who have been so used to to do with whatever they have around them, like this young man <laughs> in in a very simple construction, but you know, it will not sink. He knows about it. You know, he knows what he's doing there. Right. Mm -hmm. well, Transportation. And on one and point. That, point. Sorry for mm -hmm. jumping in. Uh, uh, that's the whole point, right? Is to, uh, I think that's the real value of, of Kerala and the backwaters is, like you said at the outset, uh, life has slowed down uh, in, a, in a country that's pretty frenetic in other, in other places slowed way down and it's the opportunity to make the cultural connection you know to uh, to see people with their their real lives and and make those sort of connections um we won't be using the coracles here but um we do have planned for the tour uh we'll have a, a morning or an afternoon where we all pile into canoes and we'll paddle our way back into the backwaters uh for those of you who have immediately seized up uh, you won't have to do the paddling yourself. We'll have somebody that's going to do that for you. So let's let's see what I've got next for a, a picture here. Oh, just one of the little back canals there. And I guess that um, the place is just laced with both big and small canals, right? Yeah, that's so fascinating that you go from like a little, it looks like more natural kind of canal and into more a built canal. Maybe you're crossing a a brackish water lagoon, or maybe you're getting a little bit out into a, a larger lake. And, and, and that is so you go from this almost tropical vegetation, then you have rice paddies, etc. So depending on, you know, if you're canoeing or if you have a houseboat just for your um, family or your friends or whatever, or you're doing the public ferry, obviously it depends a little bit <laughs> on, on where you're going. But that for me was, but that, that nature is, is incredible. Um, not only there, right? It's not just the nature of the backwaters. The whole of Kerala has an incredible nature. It's, yeah. And the green, it's and, yeah. I can see from the pictures that w when you say that it's, you know, it, it's not spectacular nature, you know, it's not like the, the, the mountains or a huge waterfall. It's that sort of soothing, depends. all green, yeah, but, makes yeah, you feel but really good. That depends on yeah, but it depends on where you go because Kerala is a lot, right? And because you could go up into the mountains, you you could leave the backwaters, right? And mm -hmm. you could go up into mm -hmm. the mountains and see. Uh, but it's still, you're right in a certain way. It's still kind of rolling hills of tea plantations, you know. And uh, yeah, it it is. It's not not you know scary nature. You know, it's not Nepal or Himalaya or you know. It is, it is up there, but, but for sure, I just want to add that there is more than just the, the backwaters, obviously, to, to Kerala when you talk about nature. Right. Uh, here's the picture that I had behind me. So everybody's been looking at that the whole time. We don't need to stay very long on that. Another yeah. one here. Uh -huh. Actually, I had, um, when we stayed, oh, there you go. That's the ferry. See that's when that's I said that you have that? that roof, that deck on top with this covered. So you can actually sit there and, and uh, enjoy also. Nice. And they, you know, they look a little old, those ferries, right? When you look at that photo, <laughs> but it's completely fine. Yeah. And that you see that, sorry. Yep. No, I, I was just going to comment about the tour again, that I, I believe we have a a, a private big boat scheduled for a part of it. Then we're going to do the canoes and then we're going to go on foot and visit one of the villages and have that sort of exchange. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah but it's always, it's always um, have, have a, you know, have a real contact with whatever village people living in a village or whatever it is, 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 is so important, isn't it? Yeah, we always try to make sure that we've got some sort of, whoops, that's not Carol anymore, sorry. Let's go back the other way. We, um, 
but I just I just want to comment that we always try to incorporate some sort of cultural connection experience on our tours. Sometimes that's a little hard to, you know, for, to, for it to be prescribed, you know, for a group of 20, 25 people or whatever. Um, but we always do our best to make it as authentic as possible and and uh, to avoid the canned experiences. But but sometimes when you're when you're scheduling it out a year and a half ahead for a group, uh, um, that's really all you can manage. Here's another shot of one of the smaller canals. See, that's actually well, that's from. Um, I think that's that's one of my photos. <laughs> okay. uh, that's from uh, another way. I, I talked about the eight hour long public ferry, but we also did the day before. We saw that there was just four hours afternoon ride. We were a little tired. You know, you've been traveling. Huh? We thought, mm, looks perfect. And so we went on a boat. I think there was just another couple. Uh, there was a couple and then me and my friend and, you know, four of us. And we thought, you know, OK, this is fine. We're just the four of us. And it was fabulous. It was just, again, you see the nature there with the palm trees and everything. And they had these cushions. You could you could lay down like an Indian princess or you could or you could sit or you could, you know, have your feet hang out in the water. That was just a four hour uh, with a private, um, you know, four people, a private boat ride that was another way of doing it. And again, relaxed and you get into the Kerala mood at a given moment. <laughs> it, it's funny because when I, you know, I live in the south of France and there's also a little bit of, you know, laid back. And I, I as I don't know the rest of India, obviously I cannot talk about the rest of India, <laughs> but for sure in Kerala, it's, it's you know, it is that relaxed and kind of let things flow, which is feels good when you're traveling. You know, yeah. you want to go, you want to see places, you want to do things, right? But once in a while, you you have to kind of just lean back and and enjoy. Yeah, it it sounds like if you if you had to characterize Kerala with a single word, it, it might be relaxed. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, it just so happens that um, our t our scheduled time in Kerala is right in the middle of the two week Southern India tour. So uh, a little, little more frenetic on either side. I'd like to say that it's my own personal genius of putting Kerala right in the middle when you need a little relaxing rest, but it just so happens that it's the logistics of the geography there that uh, puts us in there about halfway. Let's see, um, ah, look at there's, there's a couple of worthy travelers. I, I assume that's you see, so we're sitting there, uh, the captain is sitting behind us, yeah. And so this is just, you know, this is us just <laughs> looking a little tired, I can see that, but you know, but that was, that was a perfect moment, yeah. Really enjoying it there. <laughs> Brings back to so this is the, nice. we should have been a little better organized. We should have put this picture on first because it's it sets the mood, right? For for <laughs> relaxing does. Kerala right here. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that brings back, oh yeah, see that that's another one of the photos actually just from where we were sitting and out towards the water. And you can see you have all these um by the canal, right? You have other boats, right? maybe private houseboats, not just the tourists, but people actually living on the houseboats. And, and again, you're passing by villages and life in Kerala. Yeah, beautiful. I'm very comfortable. I, I truly, that just four hours, I felt like an Indian kind of uh, nobility of some kind, you know, just having my own <laughs> time sitting there. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. India is a great place to feel like a, a, a king or a queen or a Maharaja. Um, because so many of the nice hotels are uh, heritage properties that were once palaces. Uh, and, and uh, of course, labor is inexpensive. So there's always people taking care of your personal needs for you. So it, it, it is a great country for feeling a mm. little royal. Ah, this is what I was hoping for. Um, this mm -hmm. is... Uh, I hope it didn't shock everybody that I uh, when I switched to this. This is a, a Kaltakali dancer, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid I don't have a picture of a of the entire costume. I don't think. Let's let's see what uh, what's next here. This is just a, a a dancer who's putting on his makeup, and both Nina and I agree that this is one of the most um, engaging art forms to participate mm -hmm. in. 
um, anywhere in, in any country. Um, Nina, why don't you share your take on Katakali dance, which of course I should have said at the outset is, I don't know if it's indigenous to Kerala, but certainly this is where you encounter Katakali dance. And it is, I can guarantee, I can vouch for the fact it's amazing. So what, what was your take on what you learned from watching Katakali? Well, actually, we understood that it was really typical for Kerala, um, but yeah, it, uh, that it was um, this, it, it's part of that family of, of dancing, of Indian dance, as you can find in you know, all of India, but every state, every part of India has their little particular way of doing it, right? So, and we, it was just a little, you know, as it happens, we're walking by, we saw a poster and we thought, oh, Oh, there's a dance show tonight, Kitakali, and then, and then we saw that it was the um, Katakali Center, so it was really the place to go. There's also um, it was in the city of uh, Kocha, uh, Kochi, and there was a, another place you could go to. That was the uh, folklore museum where Prince Charles had been to see uh, a dance show also. Um, but there was a little bit, the folk, folklore museum was a little bit far away from where we were. So we just thought, well, we'll take that place. It's, it, it looks great. And it was actually, uh, the dancers were graduates from a dance school. So it's really the, the, the creme de la creme of, um, of what they had, uh, you know, of new young dancers. And as and my friend had already visited India and she had not seen that kind of dance yet. So we, we didn't know what to expect. Like you, you have said <laughs> over and over again, we, we didn't know what to expect. So there was kind of no, we just, you know, we just went in and thought, oh, we'll enjoy this. I'm sure we'll enjoy this. And um, so it's this, it's, it's a story, right? They're dancing, that they're telling a story. And it's a lot with uh, facial expressions and and of course the movements of the hands and the arms and the whole body is every movement as so often in Indian dance, every movement, every tiny little movement with a hand or a face means something, right? When you don't know the story, do you understand it? Maybe not all of it, <laughs> but it, it could be myths and legends that have been told, right? Um, so they would have the, that colorful makeup you're seeing there, incredible costumes, really um, lots of colors, face masks also could be like just makeup like that or face mask. And what we, um, we didn't understand, or what we didn't know, well, we, not like we understood what we didn't know, was they also incorporate in the Katakali dance, they, in, they incorporate parts of martial art uh, movements and kind of athletic performances. So you can imagine this dancing, you know, that you probably know combined with something that is really <laughs> physical, difficult. So I think we went, we went, went to that performance that went on for an hour. And the great thing was that when the hour was over, the dancers came down and, and they, and they went around and they said, you have, and they looked at us because there were very few um, travelers, by the way, um, there were many locals at that place there. So they went up to us, first of all, and said, so did you enjoy it? And do you have any questions? And that was, you know, you imagine that? <laughs> you have these incredible dancers coming up to you and say, do you have any questions? They're going, yeah, you know, what, what was that? And we, we, so truly, um, I would recommend to go to um, a performance like that. It gives you a feel of this, uh, I don't know if, for how long it's been around, but uh, maybe we're talking about you know, hundreds and hundreds of even thousands of years. And and then um, um, like, uh, very typical for the region that I, I, what we wanted to do. We wanted to find something that was really typical for Kerala. So yeah, perfect. Um, I'll share a little bit about my experience, which is from many, many years ago. We did it in Cochin and um, the place where we saw the Katakali dance was well written up in the Lonely Planet, and it was uh, it was basically a, a a man who does Katakali had sort of developed this whole I'll call it an outreach program. It was it was it took place at his house. We were up on the roof, and he comes out, and then he and he sits down and he puts on his makeup. And while he's putting on his makeup, he's explaining the whole dance. I, I don't remember the details, but I, I do remember that 
the putting on of the makeup lasts every bit as long as the performance. But then by the time he performs, you do understand what's going on. And, and the other thing I remember is that, that uh, there's, there's a real sort of pantomime element to Katakali. So the, the language barrier is not as important as with other kinds of uh, local dance that I've experienced uh, around the world. Um, I, I found it very engaging. Uh, and and you, you, after having had the explanation, you can, you can sort of follow what's going on in the narrative, um, which, which makes it a really engaging kind of art form. I mean, I love going to dance performances all over the world, but I, a, a far more typical experience, it seems like to me is, you know, it's, it's visually arresting and, and really fascinating for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then, and then because you can't track the thread of the story, you just sort of, you know, for the next 45 minutes or an hour and a half or whatever, it, it, it becomes boring just because you don't understand. I, I did not find that to be the case with the Katakali. So um, really enjoy that. And of course, we will, uh, on the tour, we will definitely uh, have a, a, a Katakali experience uh, when we're there in Kerala. Um, well, this has just been lovely. Uh, Nina, thank you so much. Um, I don't want to cut us off here. If, was there anything else uh, on your mind that you wanted to share about Kerala, the backwaters, India in general? Anything on your mind before we... There's so much. Can we go on for an hour more? <laughs> No, I mean I know I know you 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 like food, right? And me too. I mean yeah. anywhere I go, local food, and we had a lot of experiences with just street food. We had fabulous restaurants, um, you know, not too expensive, not not four star Michelin restaurants. That is not what I'm talking about, but you know, nicer, comfortable places. We had meals in the homestays where we were, where we actually were invited into the kitchen to do the cooking. And um, and the breakfast, I mean, the breakfast, I, I just, I want to have that, you know, I, I plan to have that when I got home and then I went back to yogurt and cereals and, you know, usual stuff. But the dosa, remember the, the, the thin pancakes in, in, in right. like, presented like a cone like that and, ah, uh, I mean, and the seafood and, I mean, vegetarian um, food was, was great. And, and we had, we had I, I just have to add also that we went up to Munar, which is in the mountains uh, with the tea plantations, very famous for tea plantations. We went to a tea museum and all that, but it was such just uh, the homestay with place we, we stayed. We arrived and it was right in the middle of a rainforest. It was like Jurassic Park. <laughs> it was, <laughs> and, and we had just been by the coast in Kuti, in Kutin. And then we get up to Munar, in you know i don't know how many thousand feet we were actually up in um and and that change you know going sea up down again backwaters and then we also had a, a stay at a, a beach a beautiful vakala beach uh, it's further down towards the capital well that's another thing yeah ayurvedic you've heard about the ayurveda medicine like the, the alternative medicine and you know, i'm just open to anything i don't, I don't have any serious health problems but we just went for massages and listening a little bit about it and it was just like two days treatment over two days with massages not very uh, expensive you know and it just you any worries you had any kind of you know my my back is a little hurting gone gone <laughs> gone so, and that was another interesting, and I know a lot of travelers, um, a lot of people go to Kerala for the Ayurvedic um, treatments. Believe it, you can believe it or not, you know, it's alternative medicine. Uh, yoga classes, I have, I have a friend who's been to Kerala twice just to, to do yoga classes. So anyway, you see, I'm just saying lots of things you can do, lots of things you can enjoy. Um, beaches with quite a bit of waves though. <laughs> it's a little violent on the beaches there, but beautiful, beautiful sunsets. Anyway, I'll stop there, right? Because <laughs> I feel like I go on forever. And I actually, I, I just found in, in my, my little booklets and stuff, I still have a little Kerala map with, I put, put down the places we went and all that. You know, the things that you, you just keep and you can't throw them out. 
this is my thing. And also because I want to go back to Kiana. Well, listen, I, I always say um, <laughs> for any trip, there's, there's, there's three parts, right? And they are uh, very often of equal value and pleasure. You know, the first stage is the planning. The second stage is the actual travel, the execution. And the third is the recollection. I mean, that, isn't that why we travel to have memories of, uh, of other places and other experiences? Sometimes just as valuable, just as meaningful as the uh, execution of the travel. And of course, okay. Here we are in the planning stages. Hopefully, there's people watching that are thinking this is a this is a place I want to see and I want to experience. And um, uh, I'm I'm hopeful that that is the case. And Nina, you've been fantastic, and uh, your your genuine enthusiasm uh, reflects my own for Kerala and for India. So I, I'm really glad that that came through. Um, just to wrap up for all of our viewers here, uh, a reminder of of tomorrow evening. Uh, virtual tour with with Alu and then PowerPoint on Friday and um, a, a little note about uh, once again I was unable to access the um, comments that might have been coming in comments and questions so when we sign off here I'll go back to uh, Adventures with Sarah Facebook page and see if there's any comments that uh, that I need to respond to any questions that need to be uh, answered. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we hope to see you soon. Keep on traveling and uh, travel with intent. Au revoir. Merci, Nina. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.